since uh, forever people have been wondered by 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 uh, small and large things and and uh, uh, in the early 20th century it had become clear then that uh, that optical systems have its limitations the work of, of Abbe was groundbreaking and, and it clearly stated that that uh, the resolution of a light microscope is limited by the wavelength of the light and there's nothing you can do about it you can try to improve a little bit with optics but but going below let's say one quarter of a wavelength is, is really not possible so so we are talking about oh, half the wavelength um, details below 200 nanometers will not be resolvable. It led, of course, to development of new modalities. Still in the 50s, people believed that electron microscope is going to totally uh, displace light microscope. But then new, new uh, biochemistry, biology in the, in the late 80s or mid, since mid 80s and 90s uh, started a new uh, sort of like uh, a renaissance of light microscopy and along that along with that renaissance uh, the ideas of, of uh, developing the light microscope further started emerging and one of the uh, key persons in this was of course Stefan Hell who, who had in his mind uh, ideas that, that uh, this our best limit shouldn't limit us, that there should be ways of going around this limit. And one of the technologies that was developed then was STED microscopy. So, for example, we have been uh, using the simulated uh, mission microscope uh, with uh, self-junction proteins. So, whereas in confocal uh, laser scanning microscope we would see just a blob, now with the uh, stimulated emission depletion microscope we can see the individual proteins uh, within that tight junction and we can then uh, learn new things about the uh, proteins associated with different uh, diseases affecting these junctions, for example, neurofibromatosis. And another uh, line of research we're uh, running is uh, osteoporosis research where we uh, image the contact between osteoclasts, the bone resolving cells and the bone and uh, then decipher how the signal from the bone recognition mediates through the cell and uh, initiates the resolving process. Microscope system is a commercial system for Leica. It's uh, namely Leica TC STED. It's a super resolution system with two high resolution channels. They are able to acquire images at about 50 nanometers resolution. Uh, otherwise, it can also be used as a normal confocal microscope, or then you can use the depletion laser as a normal multiphoton laser, so you can do multiphoton studies as well. And um, in addition, we have added uh, multiple custom features to this set system. Uh, for example, we added time resolved measurement capability so we can do lifetime imaging and fluorescence correlation spectroscopy. This is especially interesting when, uh, when considering state FCS because in, uh, with stimulated emission, you can reduce the size of the FCS volume and you can, you can image or do spectroscopy in higher concentrations. Uh, also, flim uh, to some extent might be reasonable. Uh, then we have uh, own research project of ours. It combines the AFM scanning probe microscope with that microscope. The biophysics laboratory has now joined uh, the Turku Bioimaging Network and uh, that network is then connected to the Eurobioimaging network that is in the building phase. So that's something that the bioscientists 
see as uh, equal equivalent to st uh, CERN for the nuclear physicists. So that provides an open access for the researchers around Europe to get access to the best imaging facilities available. Uh, as a part of this collaboration, we have uh, plenty of uh, both national and international collaborations coming to Tuiku to image the samples. This is something we can build on. We develop the know-how to image various samples, help people with their projects, and then with this found insight into various imaging problems, we can help also other groups to deal with their specific imaging needs. And we also build contacts so we can network around the Europe and uh, promote uh, better science all around. My name is Takahiro Deguchi from Japan. Uh, I'm a PhD student in laboratory of biophysics. And my major is uh, medical in, uh, physics. And uh, my subject is uh, super res resolution microscopy techniques. And recently we have combined state microscope and atomic force microscope uh, to study uh, osteoclast binding mechanism to the bone surface. And the purpose of this uh, combination is uh, to study uh, osteoclast and for the uh, better understanding of osteoporosis and possibly uh, new treatment of osteoporosis. This is actually the place where I got the idea first of uh, stat microscopy um, in uh, late summer, early fall, 93. Um, I came here, of course, with the notion and, of course, with the wish and goal of making a fundamental difference in the resolution of uh, light microscopy, fluorescent light microscopy, and so somehow I had a feeling that uh, the key to a higher spatial resolution is uh, the floor form, not changing the waves and the way the waves are formed by the objective lens, but the uh, properties, respective properties of floor form. And so um, after thinking about all kind of um, uh, floor form properties um, for resolution improvement, um, I came across a stimulated emission reading a textbook in quantum optics and um, uh, eventually uh, I realized that turning uh, the die off by stimulated emission would be a uh, fundamental uh, way to uh, uh, increase the spatial resolution in a fluorescent light microscope uh, by a huge factor and in that it would in principle be unlimited if one can implement uh, this method very effectively. Um, I remember the days very clearly, I was very excited, came actually from the students dorm where I realized that first to this building um, and um, thought about it and of course thought many times whether there is a flaw in this idea or whether there's not a flaw, but um, after thinking hard about it and pondering all the pros and cons, um, uh, I felt that it should work. But in the end, of course, one has to prove that it works and that's, of course, a major step. Not only the idea is important, so it's important that, that one really does it and really shows that these things um, can be turned into practice and that they have a practical relevance. So this is also a very, very important step. And initial steps were made again here in Turku because here we set up um, the first STAT experiment trying to silence uh, the fluorescence of a dye. So we used a pulsed uh, light source, uh, frequency doubled and even sapphire laser in order to excite the dye. And then the pulses from the same source, from the same laser, um, stretched a bit uh, by a fiber in order to de-excite them, to, to uh, um, switch them off. And so we actually could see uh, here in initial experiments that this concept should be viable. And, um, and so um, it turned out to be um, a, a worthwhile uh, goal to pursue.
now that there are several different um, high resolution optical techniques they are all based on on the fact that you can do switches so so uh, I guess um, the crystal ball holding the crystal ball uh, which technology which technologies are going to be there in 10 years this is very hard I myself believe that stead because it's a direct imaging technique will have its place place uh, as it seems now now that, that people have the highest interest on our stead uh, we will, of course, uh, continue here with STED since we have it, to improve it, to, to, use, uh, to uh, supply it to the users in, within the Euro, Euro of bioimaging. But of course, we will keep our eyes open with, to, towards other techniques as well. Uh, we offer it as a core service along with the science that we are ourselves doing with the, with the technique.